other parts of the brain. So here we're having a sagittal view of the brain, and the four major parts that we can see are the cerebrum, which goes all the way to here. That's all the cerebrum. The diencephalon we see right about here. The brain stem starts here and goes down to about here, where it then turns over to the spinal cord, and then the obvious cerebellum. Now, what we can see of the cerebrum is some white matter. Right here we see the corpus callosum, and this portion right here is also white matter called the fornix. In between these two structures, the anterior portion of the corpus callosum and the fornix, we see a membrane that separates the two lateral ventricles on the anterior side. You call that the septum pellucidum, this membrane. If I were to poke this, I would go straight into the lumen of one of the lateral ventricles. This little dot here clearly shows you where the thalamus is, which is part of the diencephalon. So if I draw kind of an oval around that little dot, we see the perimeter of the thalamus, or of one of the hemispheres of the thalamus, because all structures in the brain are uh, bilaterally symmetrical. This little dot is called the intermediate mass of the thalamus, or the interthalamic adhesion, and it interconnects the two hemispheres of the thalamus. If we move slightly inferior, but remain anterior in the brain, but inferior to the thalamus, this triangular area right about here, that is your hypothalamus. We can see protruding one of the nuclei from the hypothalamus, and that is one of the two mammillary bodies. The other mammillary body would be in the other hemisphere. Um, right here we see the optic chiasma, and in between the mammillary bodies and the optic chiasma, you could uh, expect there to be the infundibulum with the pituitary gland. Posterior to the thalamus, we have right about here, and even this reddish part is the epithalamus, the reddish part is the choroid plexus, and this is the pineal gland. So then we get to the brain stem, and the brain stem consists of the midbrain, and you can tell where the midbrain is based on the little bumps here. We'll talk about what they are in just a second. That's the midbrain. The bulging part anterior to the cerebellum is the pons, and then, as I said, we have the medulla oblongata. So if we come back to the midbrain, on the anterior side, right here, these would be your cerebral peduncles. On the posterior side, these little bumps are your corpora quadrigemini. The superior ones are the superior colliculi, and these are your inferior colliculi. Remember, your lateral ventricle was behind the septum pellucidum for this hemisphere. Your third ventricle is at the level of your thalamus, or diencephalon. That's why we have a hole in the third ventricle for this intermediate mass. So this canal here is your cerebral aqueduct that connects to the third ventricle. And then the cerebral aqu aqueduct connects to the fourth ventricle, which is this triangular space between the pons of the brainstem and then the cerebellum. I think the very last thing to point out is all of the white matter of the cerebellum, which we call the arbor vitae. And that pretty much sums up what we can see from this view.